if you could just pass these around so that everyone has that. At the end of the session, if you could kindly complete that evaluation form and turn it back into me, I will be sitting up front and then we can make sure that we give our speaker our feedback. I would now like to introduce Amy Acha and her session, My New Club in Orientation to Greatness. Amy K. Acha, Distinguished Postmaster, is a National Certified Guardian, Power of Attorney, Professional Speaker, and an author of several books. Amy has been a Toastmaster and has been a member of Toastmasters International since 2007. And she earned her Distinguished Toastmaster designation in September of 2014. Amy, to kindly read the 
Toastmasters promise loud and clear for us. Excellent. As a member of Toastmasters International and my club, I promise to attend meetings regularly, to prepare all of my speeches and leadership projects to the best of my ability, basing them on projects in the competent communication, advanced communication, or competent leadership manuals, to prepare for and fulfill meeting assignments, to provide fellow members with helpful, constructive evaluations, to help the club maintain the positive, friendly environment necessary for all members to learn and grow, to serve my club as an officer when called upon to do so. To treat my fellow club members and our guests with respect and courtesy. To bring guests to club meetings so that they can see the benefits Toastmasters membership offers. To adhere to the guidelines and rules for all Toastmasters education and recognition programs. To maintain honest and highly ethical standards during the conduct of all Toastmasters activities. How many of you can resonate with that promise? How many of you are thinking, yeah, I do that. I think I do that. Oh, I think I should be doing that a little bit more. As I read through the promise and reminded myself, I thought, yeah, there's a few things that I'm pretty good at. And there's a few things I could work on, too. So now, I've decided that at my club meetings, I think we're going to try and read this promise. Maybe, maybe some of my fellow club mates will agree with me that it's just always a good refresher to remind ourselves and to remind the club why we're all here, what it's all about, and how, as a club, we can step into greatness. Is that available anywhere? This is actually on the Toastmasters International website, and it's in the District Recognition Book, which I'll show you a picture of the front cover of it in a minute. But so it's a few places. If you go on to Toastmasters International and Google it, or just search it, it will be in there. Yes? Uh, I actually remember it from the membership application. I oh. it's on the second page. There you go. So that's good because none of us remember going to <laughs> That's our business cards. Business cards. So it's every It's like the girls got promised. But better, because we're growing up now. <laughs> so how does the structure go? A lot of people get a little confused as you're a new club and you're trying to learn how is the structure going? understand the structure. What's an area? What's a division? What's a district? Which order do they go in? Because at my company it's totally different than here. So occasionally I'll have to pull out my chart and I'll, re I'll have to remind myself how does it start? And really the base or the foundation, if I were to put this in a pyramid form, the foundation of our clubs and of our whole organization as a whole are you. It's you, the members. You are the foundation. You are the base, you are the starting point, because without you, we wouldn't have an organization, right? So it's the club. At the club level, usually 20 or more members. Now some clubs are still working towards getting that 20, or maybe they had the 20 and they kind of dropped and they're building it back up again. But 20 members is what we consider our base membership for each club. Above the clubs is the area. Area is made up of several clubs, usually four, five, six clubs. Then we have the division, made up of several areas. Then we have the district, which is our District 30. And from there, it moves up to a region and then to international. Now this chart you can also find on the website too. So if you get confused or think, oh, what am I supposed to do? Just think you have your club and your area, which is a little bit bigger. And those are what you usually <laughs> come to, into terms with. And then you can broaden it out a little bit more as you build up to the district. And District 30 covers pretty much all of Chicago. Toastmasters is an international organization. There, are, How many of you get the Toastmaster magazine? Everybody, right? How many of you read the Toastmaster magazine? Oh, very good. Sometimes, I'll have to admit it, look at the pictures. But that's okay, because sometimes I see friendly faces in the back who've taken their magazine and gone to different countries. But the bigger thing that I've noticed with Toastmasters is that when I go to other countries to speak, I find other people who are in Toastmasters. And it was very exciting for somebody to go, hey, you want me to be your timer? And they whip out their clock. It's like, yeah, the green, yellow, red. This is awesome. And then you start thinking, oh my gosh. And you see them doing the same skills that we're doing. 
these people who I had nothing in common with two days before that are working in different companies across the globe and they're doing the same thing I am. Just getting a little bit better all along the way. Automatic bond, new friendships, and of course lots of Facebook friends now. So we have our regions spread out. Those are pretty big. The other core component to our system is that it's standardized at the moment. Now I will say that we are changing our educational system slightly and our, as we know right now, we don't know right now really what's going to happen. Maybe some of our people who have been through um, some of the training, got some of the additional information, can pass on the information to your clubs. But the educational system is changing a little bit. But it's still the basic structure, that which we have it now. As a new member, you should be working both on your competent communicator journey and your competent leader journey. And that was pretty confusing for me when I started. I thought I needed to do all of one manual before I could move to the next one. Well, that's true if you're going down the communication track. But you can do communication and leadership at the same time. So for almost every meeting that you go to, you could get a role ticked off in your leadership book. Every speech you do, including speeches that you get credit for in your leadership book, you can get credit for in your competent communicator as well. So moving on down the journey, I've seen some people take it in less than a year. They've gone through the whole journey. Now they might have made Toastmasters their life in and out of work. Yeah. Other people, I was a little slower progression. It took me about four years to get my CC because I was afraid to get on the stage. I was afraid to stand up in front of a group. And seven years ago, I used to stand here with my neck turning completely red, not able to really speak in front of a group of more than about 10 people. And now, having been through Toastmasters and learning all of the skills, plus getting all of the great feedback, I can stand up in front of rooms of hundreds, whether they speak my language or not, and feel comfortable with them. journey. What's nice about it being the same journey is that you have friends that are going along right with you so you can challenge each other. I challenged my club last year when I was president for everyone in their club, everyone in the club to give 10 speeches. So what does 10 speeches get you? Another award. It gets you onto another level of your Toastmasters journey. So if you're just starting with that icebreaker, you'll have your CC finish, your pocket video paper. If you're somewhere in the middle, if you get those 10 speeches in, you're going to get at least one more award along the way. So it was a great challenge. We had a lot of people step up, take the challenge, and step on into the greatness. Working your way up to DTM. Now, what does a great club start with? Who knows what's in a great club? Well, to start with, what did I already tell you? What do you need for a great club? Members. Exactly. What else do we need for a great club? Leadership. Leadership. Growth. A location. A location, yes, definitely. Consistency. Consistency. Respect and encouragement. Very good. Respect and encouragement. Fun. Great meetings. Great meetings. Goals. Goals, all these great things. So I love acronyms. So I decided, great, great has got to be an acronym because it'll be a way for me to remember what a great meeting is. So a great meeting to start out with, you need great meetings, huh? <laughs> great meetings to start out with that G, you need to be generous. What do I mean by generous? Each one of us came to Toastmasters wanting to learn wanting to improve, that means that if you want something, you need to give something in return. You need to give what you know and what you have to help the other people in the club so that they can grow. You want to grow, they want to grow. If you were at the Achievers Breakfast this morning, you heard Joan talk about how um, the golden rule, don't do unto others as you wouldn't do to yourself, do to others what you want done to you. They want great advice, you want great advice. Be generous and give it. Give that good advice. So many times in our clubs, 
We get the positives. Oh, that was great. This was good. We're the cheerleaders. You did great. Your eye contact was fabulous. Well, what can I do to improve? Because that's why I'm here. I mean, yeah, I love all the great compliments you gave me. But I want to improve. What do I need to do to improve? The worst thing you can tell somebody, no matter what level they're at, is you are great. You have nothing to improve on. It's like, really? Because I could tell you good 10 things about myself I could improve on. So try and find something, whether it's word choices, whether it's the way that they stand, whether it is, in fact, even the jewelry that they might be wearing, the change in their pockets, anything that distracted you. If you're paying attention to my earrings right now, then you're not paying attention to what I'm saying. So that might be something that I don't even know. So be generous. Be generous in your feedback. Be generous in your evaluations. <laughs> And being generous, giving speeches, too, so that other people can learn from you as well. R for regimented. Now, this kind of came up in a few different words. Have your meetings be structured. If it's always the same in structure, then those of us that are a little more timid walking in the door are going to immediately relax. We know what to expect. We know that this happens first, this happens second, and this happens third. We may not be quite ready to jump on the stage every week when we come to a meeting, but we know that, well, there'll be table topics, and here's how they do it. So the question's always going to be different, but the format's going to be the same. Adds a layer of confidence right off the bat to making sure that you're very regimented in your meetings, in the structure. What do you think the third thing is? The E. Excitement. Excitement. Energized. No one, same thing, entertaining, energy. No one wants to go to a meeting and sit there and go, uh-huh, 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 and nod off. Now, I have to give all of you credit who have lunchtime meetings because some of you are trying to eat while other people are eating. I mean, sorry, trying to speak while other people are eating. Imagine trying to speak while the person next to you is eating carrots and pretzels. It's just going to be hard to get over their, their, their crunching. But be energized. Bring that energy to the club. I've been visiting a few clubs in my, in my journey through Toastmasters through the Club Ambassador Program. And you can see the clubs that are really energized, that are excited. The people want to be there. They want to help each other. And they make it really fun. It's fun to learn remember back when you were a little kid. Bring that energy to your meeting and you're going to attract more members. Of course, attend your meetings. Makes sense, right? But how many of us have clubs that are 20, maybe 30 people, and usually 10 show up? Attendance is important. We can't be a great club if nobody shows up. So be sure to attend. And the last thing, that Toastmasters prides themselves on is timeliness. The timing of the speeches, the timing of the evaluations, the timing of the table topics. It carries on into the timing for the meeting in general. Meetings start at one time and they end at another time. In my home club, it ends when the crabby security guard kicks us out, which is exactly at 9 o'clock and not at 9.01, as he's let us know a few times. But the timing is very important, and you'll, you'll learn to respect both the time for your speech in your own and other activities in your life. So the time that you spent giving your speech at Toastmasters definitely translates into the business environment, how much time you're listening to someone else's speech, how much time you have to do a project, how much time you have to get ready for work in the morning. Timing is important. For those of you who are not as familiar with Toastmasters, I did include a typical club meeting agenda. Start with the sergeant at arms opening up the meeting. The president might have a few words to say. Then the Toastmaster comes in, introduces all the functionary roles, the timer, the grammarian, the word master. Maybe there's a joke master, a few more little roles in between. All those are great opportunities to get up there and speak. Even if you're nervous, everybody's going to laugh at your joke if you're the joke master. 
because you try. We all want to see the other people succeed, so give it a try. Don't be shy. Some clubs may have an educational session, depending on the club, depending on the timing, and depending on how many speeches are already ready. Now the next couple of pieces might get changed around a little bit. Some clubs do table topics first, then do their prepared speeches. Other clubs will do the prepared speeches, then the table topics. And of course, you know, you can't do the evaluations until after you've done the prepared speeches. So that order may change around just a little bit. That's going to depend on your club. Might depend on whether it's a community club or whether it's a corporate club, whether you have one hour to do your meeting or whether you have two hours to do your meeting. The clubs that are community clubs that have two hours, sometimes even throw a break in there. A little bit of social time, a little chance for people, the evaluator to meet with the person that they're evaluating, the speaker, and trade some notes, say, hey, look for these things while I'm speaking. Then we wrap up with the, evalu the general evaluator going through all those functionary roles. How were the timing? What was the ums and ahs for the day? And of course, the individual evaluations, just like we heard earlier today. And then we'll close, sometimes, again, with the president coming in, with Sergeant at Arms. <laughs> yes? Uh, we have te uh, Toastmasters testimonial. Toastmasters testimonial. Master, uh, Toastmasters say why they love the club and why they want it, what their goals. Very good. A lot of clubs will start a meeting with the guests saying why they want to be there, what brought them there, or end the meeting with, well, what did you think of the meeting? Well, guess what that's doing? getting them to participate. Maybe they didn't even know it, but there's a speaking opportunity to introduce yourself, to say what you liked about it, or to say what brought you here. They've already got a little bit of speaking. And you can remind them of that. Well, hey, you already were speaking. This is good. We'll just come on up a little bit more. Nobody's great once you start out, but you have to start to become great. I think that was Zig Ziglar. So we have our officers. They're, they're key components to our, to our club. They're the ones who keep driving the club. And be sure if you are an officer, well, I have to say, if you're an officer, that you probably should be over in the other meeting right now, the business meeting. But the presidents and, and the VP. But I'm glad you're here instead. <laughs> so if you're an officer, or when you're an officer, I should say, because you'll take that next step in your journey, go to the TLIs. Go to the Toastmaster Leadership Institute days and learn what role you have and ways to improve on what your club is doing within that role, within your spectrum of that role. Now, I've had the, the pleasure of being a club mentor this last year. So what's a club mentor? Well, first you have a club that gets chartered, and your club sponsor charters that club. And then, depending on the club sponsor, once the club is off the ground, they're gone. You're like, oh, what do we do now? We're a new club. Maybe we visited a few meetings at other clubs before, but what do we do? How do we do this? How do we keep our meetings on track and know where we're going? That's what your club mentor is there to do. They're there to help you learn along the way how to set that regimented schedule how to stay on time, how to keep the energy up, how to do speeches. Believe it or not, people say, I want to join Toastmasters, and they're all in. Who's giving a speech? And guess what everyone does? They look down. <laughs> they look down. Why is that first speech so hard? It's a speech about yourself. But for some reason, no one wants to get up there and give it. So you have, as a club mentor, that's your role, to encourage those people to come on up. The worst thing you can do is actually stay in your chair. Because coming up, that's a step right there. And speaking anything is part of what Toastmasters is all about, just getting up there and trying to speak. We had a Toastmaster in, in my club a few years ago. His very first speech, I swear to God, a hundred ums. It was to sit and listen to. He was so nervous. Last year, he competed in the humorous speech contest. Awesome. It was amazing. 
to see the transition, to see the transformation of somebody who's so nervous. And that was in one year. He just stepped in and said, okay, because don't forget your audience wants you to succeed. We're looking like, yes, this is going to be great. I might learn a few things, but I'll definitely be there to encourage the person up on the screen or up on the stage. So I picked out a few little clip art things that, that struck my mind as I was going through this. That's that, the guy where the balancing beam is. I don't know if you guys watched that, oh. the, the walker that walked across the buildings in Chicago a couple weekends ago on the high wire. That's how I felt when I first was going, getting into the club. I don't know which way I go, but I feel like I'm going to fail. I feel like i got to stay on this beam and I don't know what to do. Sometimes it would take somebody just saying, yelling out, this is what you should do. Do this, do that. Here's the paper. Follow the paper. Follow the rules. It was still pretty scary. And I felt like we were going at a turtle's pace, really, to, to get off the ground, to get going. I'm not sure what I'm doing. And this was at the club level and at the personal level. What am I doing? What am I supposed to be doing? I would believe it or not, I was actually going to shy when I started. Now, after being a mentor, you realize your mentor is your best friend. Your mentor wants you to succeed. Your club mentor wants to support you. So at any point in time, pick up the phone, call them, say, I don't know what we're doing. What are we supposed to do? How do we do this? The club mentor is there to hold your hand along the way. Use your club mentor because they want to be there. They're doing it because they want to help you. Your club mentor could help you with these different tasks up here. Giving some sample speeches so you understand how, you, how to go through. Usually your club mentor will get up there and do the first table topics so that you can see the format, see how it's supposed to be structured. Now remember, your club mentor is not a professional person, not a professional Toastmasters. They're just like you. They've probably just been a little bit further along on the journey. Organize your speeches. I'll give you some tips, help with the, the mentoring program in total, and of course, helping build attendance. And the last thing, which I think we mentioned earlier, the location and timing of your meetings. Keeping it nice and set so that people know when to come. A couple of resources you can use. Um, if you are, all of you, who of you, are using your club website to sign up for roles. So those of you, see about half the room raise their hand. So let's try and make it like three quarters of the room or the whole room raising their hand by the end of the year. The club website is the best place for club members to go and sign up for a role. If you don't know how to use your club website or you're a little rusty on it, work with your, spot, with your uh, club mentor. The club website, when you bring it up, you can click on an agenda tab you log in, you click on the agenda tab, and you can show each of your members, and I'm sorry, this is really small up on this tiny screen, but basically you have a spot where you just click, and you sign in, it's your name. You click, you, that's the position I want to take this time. That's the role I want to take. If you get your members to go in and sign up, and you put a few agendas out there going out, maybe a couple of meetings, they'll start filling it up, and that way you'll have a full agenda, long before your meeting starts. A couple other resource pages are the, the District 30 site, d30toastmasters.org. Great one to find out about conferences, what's going on in the district, things like that. And of course, the Toastmasters International site, toastmasters.org. I keep those up on my favorites bar. Of course, maybe I'm a little too much into the Toastmasters thing that they're not my favorites, but you know, you get to that point where if you're referencing it all the time, <coughs> go ahead and throw it up there. You're pulling information down. Great resource. And if you like shopping, they have a little store in there too. So how do we measure success? How do we know if we're doing great things? Well, first we need a club success plan. And that will build into our distinguished club plan, which builds into a division, an area plan, a division plan, and a district plan. Have you heard, raise your hand if you've heard of the distinguished club plan. Raise your hand if you know what it means. A couple of people, okay. My first year, I had no idea 
My second year, I had no idea. This went on until I got into an officer role. And part of that was because I was learning along the way. The plan is a plan to build and track your people through the system. So what is the distinguished club plan? And keep in mind that your club plan, your club success plan, is working towards achieving your distinguished club plan. You need to have 20 members or your base members at the beginning of the year plus five more members, what you're going for by the end of the Toastmasters year, which is in July. I mean, which is in, yeah, July, June 30th. Sorry, July 1st. And there's some other goals. This is where it got tricky. Now, if there's 10 goals, and for each of these 10 goals that you get, you get a point. And once you get five points, you become a distinguished club. That's our goal. So you don't need all 10 to get the honors, you just need five. But needing five means that your members need to start achieving things along the way too. And as your members achieve, the club will achieve. And as the club achieves, the area will achieve. And as the area achieves, the division, the division, the district. And it moves its way up. So your goal as a member is to give those speeches to get your CC, to get your CL, to go on and continue on with your advanced leadership, your advanced communicator. You move along that way. So to get your distinguished club points, you need two people to get, or two CCs. Could be the same person who just likes to go to a lot of meetings and give speeches. Two CCs for one point. Then you need two more CCs for the second point. One advanced communicator, one more advanced communicator, one leadership award, such as the CL, or one of the advanced leadership awards, <laughs> including a DTM, one more leadership award, and this is where it starts getting a little tricky too, you need four members, four new members, but then you need four more new members. This is where most clubs are going to, as they start building, you're going to get those members, and then all of a sudden there's a lull. We need members. We need members. How do you get great members? <coughs> you say four more. Does that mean you get, you get five, and then you get four more? You, have four, you need to have four more. You, go there. you need to have four new, and then four more new. Okay. Some people may leave. <laughs> And at the end of the year, you want to have 20, or your base plus five. So if you lose, if you have, so you need four and then four more, that's eight. So if you had 20, now you have 28. That would be great if everybody stayed, right? But some people leave, other work, other responsibilities, life in general. So some of those people may leave. You've got your two points, four and four, and now, Couple people may leave, you end up the year with maybe 23, 24. But you've got your points because you had your four and your four. That's where it gets a little complex. <coughs> okay. Yes? And the new members also includes if you reinstate former members, right? I do not think so. I don't think because they're considered reinstated. Because I thought like if somebody was gone for a while came back. It depends on how long they were gone. Yeah, if it's like So if like it's within the grace period, then they're not considered a new member. But if they stepped away from Toastmasters for quite a while, several years, and they're coming back, then they would be a new member. So it depends on how long they stepped away from it. For the uh, 20 members, are they mentoring it by who pays their membership? Yes. So, so that's, as long as I keep a base of 20, right. uh, I've done the, the basic <laughs> Right. And then two new members that have paid their membership why I need to get four new members. Four new members for one page. Right. Now, so does this go by the different distinguished ones? I know there's a distinguished club, silver, gold, and That's how it else. builds up to. That's how it will build up to. So it gets a little confusing at this point when you're adding members and then some members are leaving. Um, so just look at it more of like the flat. Did you get four new? Doesn't matter how many left. You got four new, so you'll get a point. Four more new, you'll get another point. And I don't want to belabor this too much because it gets, it does get confusing, which is why some of us just like put up a wall and don't want to learn it. 
but you eventually you'll kind of catch on. Yes. Could you review again why it's staying two cc's and four cc's? Because it's just four cc's. It is just four cc's, but you get a point for each one of these things. You get a point, and at the end, when you have five points, you're considered distinguished. The club is distinguished, oh, so and that's what we're moving towards. And you can, you don't have to get them in any particular order. I thought you had to get all of them. The way it was worded at first, I thought you had to get all of those, then you get five points. No, you, each one is a point. Okay, gotcha. Each one is a point. Good question. Okay, so then we have our club officer training. We want our, our officers to be trained. And we have them trained twice, once at the beginning and once at the end, or in the middle, so that we can continue to improve on our skills. Is this considered a training? This one is not. It's the TLIs that are in June and December. The officer training where you go and you learn what are you go to your officer role. So you go to president class or you go to VP of education class. The last point is for your dues. And that would be for your April dues where they submitted, meaning did you get at least eight? Because eight is great. And Hopefully you have your 20 members as well. And provide the new officer list, which is when you do elections for the next year. So this ends up being April and May. So real quickly, and I can make these slides available to you because we're running short on time. I don't want to cut it into Johnny's time too. So this, you can pull this chart. This is for each club. You can pull your chart up on the district, I'm sorry, on the uh, international website. You can go in, sign in your name, you can go into your club and see where your club stands as far as their DCP points. So this is for my home club. So each one of these, as we got a point, it gets checked off. And then it also lets us know what we have left to get, to get another point. And then at the top, how many points we have, what it takes to be distinguished, select distinguished, and president distinguished. Of the way. So this is the plan that the district is following, and this is how we, as members, work towards that, and as a club, work towards that, again, the area, and then the division. This is just the front cover. This manual for the district recognition program goes into those, uh, the distinguished programs a little bit further. A lot of details, a lot of uh, information on Percentages of clubs that have to meet this and that when you get up to the area and the division level gets a little more complex than we really have time to spend. But this is, of course, on the site where your area governor should have it if you want to look more into it. Of course, you can ask questions. So I listed also um, some of the other opportunities that we have in the district, both for training and education, as well as for membership. Look on our district website and you can find these different initiatives. Under D30 or D30Toastmasters.org, I believe there's a tag that says initiatives. You can go down there. They're separated these two ways, the education and training and the membership. So when you hear about these different plans, these different things, this beat the clock, the CC spirit, this triple crown, what is it? What is it? It gets very confusing, especially if you haven't been in Toastmasters for five, six, seven years yet. Go there. It's a great reference. You can see what's going on, what our initiatives are, and what these things are that you've been hearing or seeing from your area governors. Here's the other membership ones that we have. The Club Ambassador is one of my favorite. The Club Ambassador is just visiting three clubs, three clubs that are not your own. Okay, I have included a month to month since we were kind of shortened up on our schedule. If anybody would like this slideshow, let me know. I can send it out or get Ethel to send it out. But basically, things follow through on a month-to-month -month plan. And it's pretty, once you have the layout of the month-to-month, -month, you can follow it pretty well. Knowing that our club contests just move from one month to the next, essentially building up at a level when our Toastmasters year is, when it ends, when our conferences are. <laughs> So I've sent it out here each month, and I'll definitely send this to Ethel so that she can send it out to everybody as well. So I've gone that, and you can ask me for it as well. So there's officer training scheduled. There's the officer month. officer training in December <laughs> and in June. Yes. Okay. So there'll so probably there be some more announcements about that. The December one, yes. Yeah. 
It's on the back of the yellow. Oh, it's on the back of the yellow sheet as well. That's in your folder. So we have a few things here, and I wish we would have had more time to go through all this, but we're always in a crunch, and timing is important. To have a great club, you need to have great club meetings. You need to work on your communication skills and your competent communicator and your competent leader. Have your DCP plan as a club. Who's going to get those CCs? Who do you think is going to get them? Work with your area governor, work with your club mentors to get there. Get in the mode, work your manuals, do officer training, pay your dues, and have your elections on time for your next year. Get that club success because it will lead into district success. For membership, I like to say maintain and then gain. We hope that we're going to continue to grow our clubs. And when in doubt, shout out. Make sure that you ask somebody if you don't know. If you have a question, do just like you, you were doing in here. Ask the question. It's the best way to learn. Unfortunately, we're a little short on time. But if you have any questions, I'll be around the rest of the day. So, presentation and I'm someone who's been in Toastmaster six years and it's always great to go back to the basics. So let's give Amy one more round of applause. Also if you have completed your evaluation sheets, if you could please turn those in to me and I'm going to be putting them in this yellow envelope so that I can give Amy our speaker her feedback. But thank you again for coming to our session.